Well, praise the Lord on this Sabbath. The sun is down. The Sabbath has begun. Praise be to his holy name. As I was thinking and studying, the Ruk de Kadesh started moving upon me. You know, Yeshua told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life that we should dwell in, the way and the truth. He come here to introduce us to his Father. Now, I want to say this. You had a temple over there during that, his, that his time. They call it Herod's Temple because he... He built and made the temple that was already there more glorious, more glamorous, bigger, you know. And people would go and sacrifice animals during this time for their sins. But Yeshua was saying, I am the way. I am the truth. And he also said over and over and over in John, I come to speak my father's will. I say what my father, I hear my father say. I do what I see my father does. So he came here to die for our sins, but also to introduce us and reconcile us once again to God the Father, Yahweh. For you see that the scribes and Pharisees had got off the track, much like the ministers of today in the churches are doing, getting off the track of how to serve God in the way He expects us to serve Him. They would add other things. They distorted things. And so, Yeshua come and he got on to them. He even had a big deal. Whoa, ye scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Y you wolves in sheep's clothing. Y you viperous snakes. You know, I mean, he just, he went after them. Yes, he sure did, because of their neglect of holding true to the truths of Yahweh, God the Father, and his commandments, his laws, his things that he told them how to walk, how to talk, what they were supposed to do. And here they're out there wandering around doing their own thing, stealing from the widow, taking things that were not supposed to take, teaching things that they were not supposed to teach. Does that not sound like the church today? We need to get ourselves in line with the true Messiah and what He taught. For He taught the ways of the Father. I mean, in like here in Luke, the 21st chapter, beginning with the 34th verse, he says, And take heed to yourself, lest any time your heart be over to, uh, overcharged with surfetation, S-U-R-F-E-T-I-T-I-N-G, and drunkenness and the cares of life. So that day come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the earth of the on the face of the whole earth. That snare is coming. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of God. You cannot let the cares of this world, 
the desires and the lust of the flesh, the things of the things that we see around us overcome us and take our eyes off of him, off of him, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one who gave his life for you. Now let's go over to Luke 14, and I'm going to begin with verse 25. And it tells you, he tells you the cost of discipleship. The cost of it. It will cost you something. I'm sorry I have to tell you this. I mean, you think, oh, I just get saved and I'm okay. I can do what I want to do. I can dearly bop along this road. Uh, no. There is a cost factor, whether you like to believe it or not. It's a walk of faith, but it still costs you something. And what does he say? And he now he says, and there and it says, and there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and he said unto them. Now Yeshua is speaking into to this great multitude. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and child and brother and sister, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And he said, what? He said, hate? Hate? How can I explain this, Father, that they will understand? When it comes down to it, the things of this world, your father, your mother, your wife, your husband, your children, and if you love them more and you put them before him, before him then you're putting God on the back burner then you're putting your mama your daddy and your 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 mate your children on the front burner no this is not acceptable you see I love my husband I love him But if it comes to a choice between him and my beloved Yeshua, who am I going to choose? I'm going to choose Yeshua above the man that I even love. I choose the one who died on the cross for me and shed his blood for me over my own mate that I love him. But if I have to, if I if I am told to make a choice between Yeshua and my husband, I will choose Yeshua every day of the week over him. This is what's talking about. You have to get to the point. If that mother, that father, those children, that mate comes to you and says, Okay, you're going to make a choice today. You either choose me or him. If you don't deny him and walk away from him, because I'm tired of you living this life and you're always doing what he wants you to do and he's putting you before me and and you, you I, won't, I won't stand it. There's husbands that have done that to their wives. There are women that has done that to their husbands. 
You have to come to the point. You may love them, but it, when it comes to Yeshua, I'm sorry. Nope. I choose Yeshua. And if they said, well, that you hate me. Well, if that's what you think, that's what you think. I will ch always choose Yeshua over you. And if he goes in, packs his bags, and goes out the door, go. Go by all means. Don't stay with me if you if you don't want me to serve my Lord and God, my Yeshua, who died for me. Then forget it. I turn my back on you, because I will serve Him above all cost. Let's go on. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. See, we have to come to the point that we reject everything of this world. Even if it's of the family. We have to reject. And even to the point we hate the bitterness and the anger and the malice that's in their heart that's trying to drive us away from the Messiah. Now, I'm sure, but being that I don't know Hebrew, there is a Hebrew word for what he just said about the hate. And it's probably a very profound word, meaning more than just, I hate you, I hate you. No. To me, I love them enough. I will turn my back on them and walk away from them if I have to, to serve my Messiah and prayfully shine a light that one day they'll wake up but if they don't they don't that's a choice they make and I must take my cross because sometimes when we have to make these decisions see my ex-husband was the kind of man He resented me being a minister. There would be times when I was going to a revival that he would literally stand at the door and say, if you go, I won't be here when you get back. He would try to flatten my tar. He would do everything that he could to stop me from even going to church. He would do everything to keep me from going to revival and holding revival meeting. And I look at him and go, if you flatten my tars, I will take a sack of clothes for me and my kids and we'll walk down the road, but I'm going. Even though I loved that man, I hated his always persistence to try to get me to stop serving my Messiah and preaching the word. And I always put my Messiah before him. And of course, eventually he decided that he wanted a divorce anyway. He said, you're too holy to live with. Well, it's like, okay, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. I don't consider myself holy, holy. But, okay, maybe that's a good thing, you know. I had to bear 
a heavy cross while I was married to him. And especially when he molested my daughter, our daughter, his own flesh and blood, it was a cross that was almost unbearable, almost broke me. But Yeshua stood by me and helped me walk on. For the cost of being his disciple is not always easy. Sometimes it's very painful. Very, very, very painful. And sometimes you make to have to make decisions that you thought you would never have to make. That you never wanted to make. But you have to come to a point that you hate everything of this world. To the point you're willing to give it all for him. And walk away if need be. To serve him. To do what he wants you to do. Let's go on. For which of you intending to build a tower. Set not down first. Calculate the cost whether he has have sufficient to finish it. In other words, if you're going to build a tower or a house or whatever, you're not going to start laying the foundation of that place not knowing how much the cost will be to erect the walls of that house, putting windows and doors in it, erecting the inside walls of that house to make the rooms, the bedrooms, the the kitchen, the living room, or whatever. Calculating the cost of the roof that goes on and the covering over the roof to get, so it won't leak and the rain won't come in. So, Sometimes you've got to sit down and figure the cost because there was times when I was married to my ex-husband and I was going on a revival and he would say, especially at first when he would say this, and he'd say, you leave and I ain't going to be here when you get back and I'm going to get a lawyer, I'm going to divorce you and I'm going to take the kids away from you. So I had to sit down and say, okay, if I go do your will, if I preach your word, and people could be saved, okay? There could be people out there that if I don't go and preach your word, their souls could be lost and maybe nobody else will come along and preach the word. But yet, when I get back, my husband could be gone. I could be served with divorce papers. And in the divorce papers, he be, could be going after my children to take them away from me. Because I always took them with me to revivals. I didn't leave them with him. And knowing that being the way the court says, and I didn't have a job, and I could lose them. And I love my children. But was I willing to go ahead and go with the odds that I would lose my husband and I would lose my children, maybe even lose my home and be put out on the street, which eventually did happen at the end of the marriage. That's what he did to me. He took everything. 
Of course, my children were in their teens. They were capable of taking care of themselves. But he put me out on the street. No home. No place to go. Nowhere to live. But it's choices that you have to make. Whether you serve him and figure that the cost of serving him is worth it. I had always chose the cost of serving him was worth losing my husband, losing my children, losing my home, and losing everything for Yeshua HaMashiach. It was well worth it. That's what I calculated because he died on the cross for my soul's salvation. He paid the debt for my sins. And he was giving me eternal life and building me a new home in the heavenlies. Because he said, there's many mansions and I'm, I, I'm uh, built, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, building you one and I, when if I say that I am I will come back and get you I chose to believe him 29 less H-A-P-L-Y happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold is being begin to mock him so you see, I was laying the foundation of my home up there by serving Yeshua HaMashiach. And I had to calculate the cost that I might pay for making the choice of serving Him. But at any time, if I felt like it was too much, and I said, well, okay, I'm going to quit preaching. I'm not going to go to church no more. I'm going to do what you want me to do, hon. I'm going to stay at home, take care of the kids, take care of you. I'm just going to be a wife. That's what I'm going to be. I would begin, I would have been in my home. But because of the pressure of my marriage, my children, and the love for them so much that I would turn my back on my Messiah, my Savior, what he was calling me to do, and do what man wanted me to do. I would have failed God. And people would have mocked me and deservedly because I would have put my mate, my children, ahead of him. Let's go on. Or what king go to make a war against another king, set not down first and CO. N S U L T E T H, whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. It's calculating the cost of about what you're about to walk into and about to do. Let's go on. Or else, while the other is yet a way off. He sendeth an ambassador and desireth conditions of peace. So, if you calculate the cost of whether you can go to war and win with 10,000 and he's got 20,000, and you see the array of the army and you want to send an ambassador out there. To, to make peace. To save your people's lives. 
And there was times I tried that with my ex-husband. I tried to make peace with him in going, but yet being his wife, Telling him I'd try to cut the revival short or, or something, you know, trying to make amends. And that would never work. Because I'd get out there and would be having a revival that was supposed to last a week. And it ended up lasting two weeks. And I, 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 I realized, no, I can't do that. Because by t when I got home, all hell, and that's the only word I could think of, all hell would break loose. Because, in other words, I lied to him, and he let me know without any, any reserve. You lied. You said you would do this, and you didn't do it, you know. And I go, but it wasn't my choice. God moved so mightily, and people were being saved, and people were being healed. Eyes were that were blinded were being opened, and deaf ears were hearing, and cancer was being People with cancer were being healed, and and I, I couldn't stop it. I I couldn't just say, okay, I got to go home to my husband. You know, I made a promise to him. No, I couldn't do that. I had to reject that. In other words, I had to hate my husband enough that I was willing to do the will of God over the will of my husband, even at the chance of losing him and losing my children. Okay. Or else while the other is yet great I see okay. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Sometimes it will be the hardest thing you ever do to make a choice. To serve him at all cost, even at the possibility of losing your marriage, your home, your children, your family. You know, you got your mama and your daddy standing over there and going, what do you think you're doing? You're a married woman. You've got kids. I mean, not blah, 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 blah. And you go, I I'm not going to listen to you. I'm a grown woman. I'm doing the will of God. I'm not going to listen to you, Mom. Not going to listen to you, Dad. I'm going to do the will of God, whether it, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. And you will have to walk away from them. For you see, when you become a disciple of Yeshua HaMashiach, You become the salt of this world. And salt is a preservative. And they used to use it a lot on the meat offerings and things during the temple time. It's called the salt covenant. We are the salt covenant of the world. And we have to be to the point that we're willing to be that salt that salty salt. And what does it say? Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its savor, whether shall it be uh, seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill. But men cast it out. He that hath ears, let him hear. Let him hear. Being the salt of this world, when we choose things and people over Him and doing His holy will, especially if you're called to a ministry, and you're out there and you're an evangelist, and that's what I was, an evangelist, and I traveled around, you have to make choices. When you have the whole family against you, when you have your father, your mother, your brothers and sisters, when you have your husband and your children turn 
totally against you and saying, just quit, quit. No, I won't quit. I will not quit and I will serve him and do his will at all cost. For he has called me to preach the word. He has called me to do his holy will, no matter what, at all cost. He has called me. And if I have to take my cross, lose my family. You see, when me and my ex-husband, when he went and got a divorce, my brother come to me and says, what do you think you're doing? So what he did, what he did. Doctors do it. Lawyers do it. You're just going to have to reconcile with it. He's your husband. You should stay with him. And I went, what? He's molested my child. One. And he's throwing me out on the street. Two. And, and my brother also said, no, you can't come and live with us. We're not going to have nothing to do with you. You want me to live with this man that does these things? And it's okay in your eyes because there are lawyers out there in this world that do it. Doctors out there in this world that do it. And it makes it okay because they sin and they do it. It's all right that my husband does it. No. I put my Messiah first and foremost above all of you. If I have to turn my back on you and hate you, I will. Because right now you're of the world. You're breaking my heart. But you're of the world. And I will pray for you. And later down the road I'm going to forgive you. But no. You're talking nonsense. My sister said no you cannot live with me. My other brother said no you can't live with me. The church turned on me and said. It's all your fault. You know, because you really wasn't living for God the way you should, or He wouldn't have done this. When you come to the point, it would have been more easier to give in, surrender, and go back with Him. It would have been easier in the flesh than having to take my clothes, get in my car, and go where? I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going to live. I don't have a job. Because I'm a minister and I always go from one church to another, to, from one revival to another. I, I, I'm not the kind of, of a minister that gets rich, you know, the the you know the tithing and the and the offering just pouring in hand over fist. I, I, I never got that. Most of the time. I would receive enough money to put gas in my vehicle to go from one revival to the next. I wouldn't even have enough money to rent a motel room. I'd have to sleep in the car. And I'm not bragging on me. It's that I'm trying to tell you there's going to come a time in your life that you will have to make a choice. Whom do I serve? Do I serve my husband? 
Do I serve my children? Do I serve my mom and daddy? Do I serve my sisters and brothers? Do I serve the pastor of that church that turned their back on me? Who do I serve? Is it Yeshua HaMashiach who died for me? Yes. Do I serve Yahweh who commanded me to put him first and foremost and have no other gods before me? We're all going to have to choose at some times in your life. You really will. As the world grows more wickeder and more perverse, turning our families against us, turning everyone against us, everyone, you have to make a choice whether to serve Him or give in. Let me assure you on this Sabbath night, as we enter into the Sabbath, as we have asked Yeshua to come into our hearts, sit down with us as we read the scriptures, commune with us on this Sabbath and rest in Him. You may have to make a choice in your life sometime soon. Even if the government comes after you and you must choose either to serve the Messiah or give in and deny Him to save your own life. You see, I don't worry about stuff like that. I've already been through some of the fire. I've already had to carry my cross and cry as I'm carrying it, doing His will, leaving everything behind. Do you think it was easy for me? No, not really. I had been married to this man for 17 years and I had hoped and believed that I would be here with him when I, in the 50th wedding anniversary. But I had to choose whom do I love more than life itself. And I chose Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, to serve more than man. There are people out there that are running around serving man after man. They'll go from one group to another, looking for their soul salvation and their hope in a human being, a man, a minister, that will tell them all sorts of lies like saying, Oh, I'm one of the witnesses. Oh my, grow up. They will believe a lie and think they're serving God, reincarnated in that man or that woman, and just falling along blindly, letting them lead them when they're blind themselves. They have no sight. They're thinking that well, they're one of the witnesses. No. The two witnesses that will come in Revelations are stood up in heaven. They're not here on earth yet, but they will be soon. And they are not going to be born of a woman during this decade because they were already born once. Elijah had been born of a woman back then. 
I believe Enoch is the other one that was born to a woman back then. And when they were taken to heaven, I can see them standing by the golden lamp, menorah, and the, the anointing or pouring down into that menorah, and, and, and there would be reeds that overflowed into these two witnesses until it's time for God to send them back to earth again. You people that think that you're one of the witnesses, wake up, repent, and get right, and quit deceiving people, because the ones you deceive their blood is going to be upon your shoulders on Judgment Day. Wake up. There is only one Savior. That's Yeshua HaMashiach. And He came and He died on the cross for you. There is none other out there that can save you. The false prophets, the false teachers, the false everything... You just keep running to. You give your money to them. You hand it over hand and foot. And, and you'll do without handing it to them. Because you think that you can get to heaven on their coattail. Sorry. There's only one way. And that's through Yeshua HaMashiach who died for you. You have to wake up. You have to wake up in these last days. Are you willing to give everything up for Him? Are you willing to turn your back on this world? Even those that you love, turn your back on them. Walk away if you have to, to serve Him. It's hard, but choices are going to have to be made. And on this Sabbath day, as you are making these choices... And He's sitting with you. And you're communing with Him. Are you going to look at Him and say, Yeshua, I love you, but I can't leave my family. I love them. I love my mama and I love my daddy and I love my sisters and brothers. I love my husband. I love my children. And I can't forsake them and I can't give them up for you. I can't do it. I can't do it. And he'll look at you and go. And he will get up and he will depart from your home. And he will say, okay, you made a choice. I choose life over death. I choose him over all things. The one thing about my husband now, he never has ever in the 24 years of marriage ever ask me to make a choice between him and God and Yeshua. Never. Ever. He's not always understood my teachings. He's not always understood where I'm coming from. But he's never ever demanded me to leave my beloved Yeshua. If I am sick and I can't light my Sabbath candles, He will come in and He will light the Sabbath candles for me. And, I, and you know, some people say, Oh, it's a woman's place. If I'm really sick and I can't get out of bed, He will come in and He will light them for me. I remember the first time I was so sick I couldn't even raise my head up off the bed. And he come in and he lit the Sabbath candles for me. And he said, honey, is that okay? I said, I felt in my spirit, yes, dear, it's okay. Because he knows that I, I'm not able to get up right now. And you're honoring him. And you're honoring me as your wife. Because I'm not able to. You're honoring both of us. 
do you know how it blessed my heart? Because my ex-husband wouldn't have done that. <laughs> In fact, he'd probably throw the candles out the door. We have to make choices. Are we willing to give it all up for him, if need to be? Let me assure you, it's not easy. But he will walk with you every step of the way. Every step of the way, people. For he is the Sabbath. And if I didn't hold the Sabbath holy, I wouldn't have the rest that I have and the peace that I have in him. I am saying these things to you. Some of you out there will have to make choices. All of us will have to make choices. But some of you will have to make choices soon. But he will prepare a way. He will prepare you a place to stay as he did me. I didn't see it right away. But it came. It's like right now with the stuff I'm going through with this young man down there. To get him out of the house. To get him away. I loved him as a son. But I choose Yeshua over him. I choose Yeshua over him. I will do what he, the Father wants me to do. And when we get down there at the other house, I will start inviting people over on the Sabbath day. And I will prepare a Sabbath meal for us to sit at the table and talk about the goodness of Yeshua and what he did for us. I will turn it over to my father and make it a home that is a blessing instead of a meth house. We'll clean it, anoint it, And make it anointed house for him. That's the reason why people were sending me money to help. And the money that the people did send me to help me through this. That's what it will be used for. To clean a meth house after I get it. Into a place that is to worship Yahweh and invite Yeshua in and invite people in to learn the scriptures and to learn who and what Yeshua is all about. For we are the salt and we are to bring them in. Just saying. Blessing on this Sabbath day. Father, bless. Let your face shine upon them. Go before them. And to bless them. Rejuvenize their hearts. Put their hands to work for you. Let their hearts be instilled with your righteousness to wait on you and glorify you 
for we know not what day or time you're coming back to bring, take us, but we know you're coming, and we're gladly waiting for your coming and your righteousness. For we are your body. Bless us in your holy name. Let the Ruh Kadesh fall upon us this Sabbath. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and Amen.